Hello my beautiful friends, today we are going to be swatching every single product that I own from Touch of Glam Beauty. This video has been a long time in the works. I have been procrastinating making this video for so freaking long, but alas, the day has finally come. So if you are interested in seeing all of the products that I own and seeing them swatched up close and personal, then go ahead and keep on watching and let's jump right on in. All right, folks, as I just stated, I meant to do this video so long ago, but I had been waiting on a particular order from Touch of Glam Beauty that just came in the mail as of last week. So finally, I have been able to put this video together for you guys, show you some in-depth swatches, show you in-depth footage of the different products that I have from her here. And of course, we're talking about Touch of Glam Beauty, which of course is the brand that I've mentioned quite a few times here on my channel. Now, Touch of Glam Beauty is ran by a gal named Amy, who is an absolute sweetheart. She has been around since 2015 with the brand on Etsy. You can only purchase her items on Etsy. I believe she only makes eyeshadows and highlighters, but I am a-okay with that because those are the kind of products that I want to buy from someone, besides blushes, of course. We all know I'm a blush addict. But I really enjoy seeing people unleash their creativity as far as eyeshadows and highlighters go. I feel like you can do a lot with them. So I really enjoy the products that she makes. She has some really beautiful formulas. She has a bunch of different kinds of formulas to choose from as far as eyeshadows and highlighters go. Now her products are vegan and cruelty free and they are handmade with love, of course. But as we always do in these swatch party videos, we are gonna be swatching every single product that I own from Touch of Glam Beauty. So without further ado, let's jump right on in to the swatches. So let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room here, which is this shadow called As If. This is obviously my favorite shadow from her line. I don't think I need to explain why, but this is a multi-dimensional shifter shadow. And as you can see in the pan here, this looks like a freaking gem. It looks like a little crystal. I don't understand how it's so reflective without being a pressed glitter. This is not a pressed glitter. This is an actual eyeshadow. And of course, I'm absolutely in love with it. It literally looks like a little diamond that's been pressed into the pan. But this is the shade As If, and it is a cool baby pink base with hot pink sparkles and a blue shift. So you already know that I would take a bath in an entire pan of this eyeshadow if I could. It is absolutely beautiful. Now it is a multi-dimensional shifter shadow, so it's basically like a topper kind of sparkly iridescent shade. It has a little bit of white iridescence to it as well, and it's really, really beautiful, but it's not super opaque. It's definitely something that you would want to layer on top of another eyeshadow or even layer on top of itself. But my god, is it a beautiful eyeshadow or what? It is so far up my alley. This is my kind of shadow. It is so stunning. As you can see here, I have two swatches. On the right, I went ahead and just swatched it on bare skin, and on the left, I went ahead and swatched it over some glitter glue adhesive, which is how Amy prefers that you use this product as well as any of her other multi-dimensional shifters. I believe she has three, but this is the only pink one, so this is the only one that pertains to me. And like I said, I could take an entire bath in this product here. It is freaking beautiful. If you like pink, this is the way to go. It is absolutely gorgeous. It looks a little bit chunkier in the pan, but when you get it on the skin, as you can see in the swatches here, it smooths out a little bit. It doesn't look so thick and it definitely doesn't look overly glittery as well. It's just ultra shiny. Now this next beauty right here is probably my second favorite shade she's ever come out with. And this is the shade Hawaiian Skies. That name just gets me. This this product legitimately looks like Hawaiian sunsetty goodness. I am absolutely in love with it. And this is another shifter shade, but it's much more opaque. It doesn't have that sparkly kind of iridescent sheer base to it. And this is a shifter that starts as a coral, then shifts to gold, then green, and then blue. And then finally it hits purple and it basically changes in all different lights and angles. And basically once you get it on your eyes, you turn your eyes a certain way out in the light and you're gonna see a little bit of green and purple, or you're gonna see a little bit of gold and orange or peach. It is absolutely beautiful and there are so many different colors that are running throughout this shadow. Legitimately, it reminds me of papayas, it reminds me of tropical sunsets, even though I've never seen a tropical sunset to save my life. In my opinion, it's one of the prettiest combinations of colors she's come up with thus far. When I saw her previewing this shadow, I knew immediately upon the first post that I saw of the shade that I needed to add this to my collection. This was something that I didn't have and it is a very, very unique shade. The camera doesn't really catch all of the different colors that are in this shadow but once you get out in the sunlight you're gonna see so many different colors reflecting it is freaking beautiful plus it's summer and I feel like this color is absolutely perfect for a warm summery day especially if you're in Hawaii which I'm not 
I wish I was. Owning this eyeshadow is probably the closest that I'm ever gonna get to going to anywhere tropical or going to Hawaii, so I'll take it. I'll take what I can get over here. It's slim pickings over in Washington. The next eyeshadow we have here is called So Fetch. That is so fetch. This eyeshadow might look white in the pan, but don't let it fool you. This is an iridescent shifting transformer topper eyeshadow. But the difference between this particular formula and a multi-dimensional formula that we saw earlier, like As If or one of her other sparklier shades, is that So Fetch doesn't have any glitter in it. So this is basically a shifter topper shade that doesn't have any glitter, which I find to be really interesting because I haven't really seen that that often, to be honest. But this shade in particular shifts from a pink gold base to pink to purple. Purple, and finally to see green and as you can see in the actual pan itself it looks white but it is not white even in the slightest it did look a little bit more pale I would say on my skin when I did the actual swatch itself but at the times that I've used this on the inner corner and on the brow bone it has looked pink with a little bit of gold and maybe even a touch of green so next up we have the shade seduce me and this is a bubblegum pink that has a lime and a golden shift this shade is absolutely beautiful when I first saw the pictures of this eyeshadow and when I first saw her previewing these photos, I thought that the shade was going to be much more baby pink and a little bit cooler, a little bit lighter, but I'm not disappointed that what we've basically gotten here is kind of like a mid-toned raspberry pink that's a little bit more muted, and it definitely has a really strong lime and golden shift as well, but I just wasn't expecting it to be so deep in tone, but like I said, I'm not unhappy with that by any means because this is actually a very unique shade to my collection because of the more raspberry-ish undertone versus being a bit more pink and a Bit more cool tone because I have a million cool tone pink. I haven't really seen a whole lot of mid toned raspberry pinks that have a dual chromatic shift. So, this is a very unique shadow and I think it's really beautiful. Of course, I do. I love pink. We all know this, but I really like the raspberry undertone because it's just not something that I've seen that often here in the beauty world. All of her eyeshadows are really pigmented, very easy to work with, very creamy and emollient, but this most recent collection that she came out with, she really knocked it out of the park with the formula because these are like butter to stick your fingers in. They are so creamy and they are so smooth and they just apply so easily and Seduce Me is definitely a great example of that here. Speaking of buttery and delicious eyeshadow formulas, sounds like I'm talking about a freaking baked potato, but nonetheless, this is another one of her newer formulas that she recently came out with. This is the shade pink me about it. This is a purple with a pink shift and a few pink sparkles kind of running throughout it as well, but it's a little bit more subtle. So to be honest, I don't exactly remember what I was talking about because I just had a run-in with a giant nasty spider that was terrorizing me from across the room. I am mortified of spiders. He was staring at me from across the room and just waiting to attack me when I was least expecting it. So I don't even remember what we were talking about about this eyeshadow. It's beautiful. You see it here. There's a very strong pink shift to this shade and it definitely looks a little bit more, I don't know, gray toned, I suppose, cool toned on camera, but in person it had a very, very strong, almost warm pink shift while still being a cool purple eyeshadow, if that makes sense. And that's about all I can say about that because I am still shook up about that freaking spider. The next eyeshadow we have here is not one of her newer formulas. I believe all of the ones I've shown so far have been her most recent launches. Now this is an older shade that I've had for probably more than a year now and this is the shade On Fleek. This is a white gold with a green to gold flash and this is a duochromatic multi-dimensional eyeshadow. Now this eyeshadow I have shown many a times here on my channel. I have shown it in so many videos. It is one of my absolute favorites as far as white golds go and I collect white golds. Some of you might not know that, but not only do I collect pink and purple eyeshadows, but I also happen to collect white gold eyeshadows, which is kind of weird. But this is a really beautiful addition to my collection of white golds. This particular shadow has some silver and gold flecks running through it, so it's a little bit thicker in formula, a little bit more sparkly, if you will, but it's still a really beautiful brow bone highlight, inner corner highlight, face highlight if you're super fair. This is my kind of shadow. I can never have enough white golds in my life, and I really like the addition of the flex of sparkle here. The light just grabs them and plays off of them a little bit more than just your typical white gold brow bone highlight, and that really sets this one apart from all of the other ones that I have in my collection. <laughs> I do also like the addition of the hint of green in this shadow. It just adds a little bit more of a unique aspect to the shade. So 
So this next beauty right here is called a fantasy and this is a very similar formula if not the almost exact same formula to on fleek except for the fact that this is a cool lilac that has a golden shift and also has a bit of green gold kind of undertones running throughout it. This shade in particular also has a very similar sparkle situation to on fleek. So basically this is a cool lilac shade that has golden sparkles kind of running throughout it. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit chunkier, but not too chunky by any means. And I think that the shadow is really gorgeous. I like that it's a little bit more cool toned because I have a lot of warm kind of lilac-y shades. And I like that Fantasy has a bit more blue running throughout it. It almost looks a little bit more periwinkle. And you can definitely see that gold shift and you can see those sparkles running throughout it. It's a really beautiful and unique shade. And I've talked about this shade quite a few times on my channel as well. I've owned it for a pretty decent amount of time, probably over a year. I believe I got this at the same exact time as on fleek. So that makes a lot of sense there. But this is her older formula of eyeshadow and there is a difference in the newer formula to the older, but I like both of them either way. But being completely honest here, I prefer her newer formula, but I still think the old formula is fantastic nonetheless. As you can see, the shade is really beautiful and sparkly and it's not super blue forward, but you do get a little bit of that kind of periwinkle undertone going on there. It makes it very unique. So I believe this shadow is my last one that I have from Touch of Glam Beauty, and then I have a few highlighters coming up, so hang tight for that. But this is the shade Sweet Nectar, and I'm sure you recognize that name if you've been a viewer of my channel since the beginning, because I used to use this in like every single freaking video. I showed this all of the time. It was one of my absolute favorites like in the whole world, and this is a beautiful salmon-y, kind of beige pink toned eyeshadow that has a gorgeous golden shift, and it also has a bit of a line green undertone and shift as well. You can see a little bit of that green action going on there in the video, but it's not super apparent. It's very, very subtle. It's like a sprinkle of lime or not a sprinkle of lime, a spritz of lime. You can't sprinkle lime. But as you can see, this is a gorgeous eyeshadow that has a similar formula to on fleek as well as fantasy so it's not one of her newer formulas and this shade does have some sparkles running throughout it as well which is consistent with fantasy and on fleek now this is a really beautiful shade that i have not been able to find a dupe for out of my collection because of that light lime green undertone that complements the beigey salmon base i would say at first glance this eyeshadow looks kind of like a beige with a little bit of gold but then when you start to turn it in the light and you start to really see it under different tones of light and whatnot, you see different colors come out. And that's a quality about Amy's eyeshadows that I really enjoy. I like that you have to kind of step outside sometimes to see a certain color that she put in there very subtly. I like that she did that. It makes it kind of interesting. It makes it kind of fun. And I like that there's so many different colors that are jam packed in her eyeshadows to begin with. And I think it's kind of cool that you don't really always see them when you're in certain types of light. But that was the last eyeshadow that I had to share with you guys from Touch of Glam Beauty. I thought I had more, but apparently I do not. So we will change that very soon here in the future. But now we're gonna move on to my highlighters. I have three highlighters from her. I believe I used to have more, but I think I gave some to some friends because they were just too deep for my skin tone. But this is my first highlighter, which is the shade Fairies Asylum. And she spells it fairies like the European way, like the British way, like the Aussie way, which reminds me of Neopets. Let me know if you remember the fairies from Neopets. If you know what I'm talking about, then you are a true 2000s real one. But this is a beautiful pale gold trichromatic highlighter, but the trichromatic action here is very, very subtle. Now, this is a highlighter that shifts from lime green to blue to gold and has some aqua reflex running throughout the actual highlight itself. Now as you can see in this watch, it basically looks like a cool icy kind of champagne-y highlight, but then when you turn your hand and you turn your face certain ways, you're going to see that green action come out. You're going to see a little bit of aqua, a little bit of teal almost, but everything in this highlighter is very, very subtle and I feel like that works perfectly for a highlight because not everybody wants a really, really strong green and blue highlighter. She basically molded together these really fun mermaidy, fairy-ish colors, but made it very wearable, which I can really appreciate. I feel like a lot of people would absolutely love this highlighter and fall head over heels for it. It is stunning. And as you can see, I'm picking up a little bit of the highlight. I barely tap my brush into that highlight. And I just wanted to show you on skin what it looks like when applied with a highlighting brush, which ironically is one of my least favorite highlighting brushes that I have in my collection. So why I chose to use it for this video, no one really knows. I don't even know. 
It's the Morphe M501, I believe. I don't remember the exact name. I bought it because some beauty guru told me to do so, which is unfortunate because I spent my hard earned coin on it. But there's not too much we can do about that now, can we? All we can do is move forward and not make dumb purchases in the future. This next highlight is most definitely my absolute favorite from her that I've tried thus far. This is the shade Bling Bling Honey, and I don't know about you, but I hear that in Rich Lux's voice bling bling honey you know you know what i'm talking about you know how he says honey if you don't know what i'm talking about then that sounded absolutely insane to your ears and i probably sounded like a monster straight out of sesame street or something but this is a gorgeous neutral champagne highlighter with a cool peach undertone and this is one of her most blinding highlighters yet according to her this highlighter has no glitter and she claims that it's also perfect for all skin tones now this is one of those classic colors that basically everyone and their mama is gonna love this is a classic neutral champagne that has a little bit of a goldeny undertone to it. This is almost an exact dupe to the Amrezy and Anastasia Beverly Hills highlight that came out last year. I own that highlight. This one is very, very similar in color, in formula, in texture. This is a very creamy and buttery, smooth highlight. It is super pigmented and blendable. This is a very user-friendly highlight that I think almost anyone could enjoy and pull off. Do I think it's 100% universal? Not necessarily because I'm sure that there's some people out there who wouldn't want a highlight like this and who wouldn't think that it would suit their skin tone, but I think that this guy would hit a lot of the checkboxes that people have for highlighters. I think this is a highlighter that so many people are going to enjoy, and this is just a classic go-to easygoing highlight. Now I'm picking a little bit up with the brush and I do an absolute terrible job at picking highlighter up with a brush on camera. I don't know what it is, but when I am off camera, I am so heavy handed with my brushes and I'm heavy handed with how much product I get. And then for some reason, when I hop on camera, I turn into a wuss as far as using product goes. And I just barely daintily tap my brush in once or twice and pick up a teeny tiny dusting of product. So I had to build this up. I believe three times to get to the opacity that you see in the final swatches here. But in real life, I've used this highlight a million times and this is a very pigmented highlighter. You do not have to go in for a second dip in real life as long as you, you know, pick up enough on your brush, which for some reason I just was not doing. And for some reason I never seem to do in these videos. It's a consistent thing that I've noticed and I don't know why I do that because in real life, I am like the heavy handed queen. People have pointed it out to me. A girl is heavy handed. And last, but certainly not least, as far as highlighters go, we have the shade Afternoon Delight, which of course reminds me of the song Afternoon Delight. And if you know the true meaning of that song, it's questionable to say the least. But this is a peach bronze with a pink undertone. Now it kind of looks a little bit bronzy in the pan and in the camera here, but in real life you can see that kind of bronzy pink peachy thing going on. It's really, really beautiful. This is a very wet looking highlighter. Honestly, all three of her highlights that I have are very wet looking, but Afternoon Delight is super, super reflective and has a little bit of a micro shimmer to it, which I personally love. And I know what you're thinking. Girl, who are you fooling? thinking you can use that as a highlighter. It is way too deep for your skin tone. And to that I say, oh, I absolutely know. This highlight is most definitely too deep for my particular skin tone. I'm a very, very pasty girl. But Amy suggests that if you like this highlighter, if you like the shine quality of this highlight, if you like the undertone and the pink undertones that we have going on here, that this would make an absolutely beautiful rose goldy bronzy type of blush topper. Now, I don't really use this much as a blush topper, but the times that I have used it, I've enjoyed it. But I like this highlight more mixed with an icy white highlight. I have a bunch of white icy highlights kind of laying around in my collection to be frank here. And because they're so stark and icy, they don't get much love from me very often. So I like mixing those together with these deeper toned highlighters, especially one like this that does have that rose goldy kind of pink quality to it. I think it's really beautiful mixed together with a lighter tone. And I do think that it lightens up to suit my skin tone when I do that. I think that if you have deep skin, this is going to be so freaking beautiful beautiful on you. I can't even stress that enough. This is going to be so stunning on you if you have deep skin. I highly suggest it if you do. The formula of this highlight is super buttery, super creamy. It's everything you could want in a highlight. Honestly, all of our highlighters that I've tried thus far have been really stunning as far as the formula goes and as far as the color goes. I feel like I have a very wide variety of shades, even though I just have three. They're also vastly different, That it kind of makes it interesting. I have a lot of options here. 
But my throat is growing more sore by this second here. I have been talking for so long. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off here, but I really, really hope that you enjoyed seeing everything that I own from Touch of Glam Beauty. My collection of her products is pretty small, and I'm sad about that because I really love her products and I hope to grow that collection in the future because a lot of her things are on my wish list. As I've been saying for the past couple weeks, if not the last month, I have been trying to cut down on my spending. So I've been doing a good job at that, but when I decide to go out and spend, you know, some treat yourself money on some new makeup, I definitely think that Touch of Glam Beauty will be one of the places that I stop by and finally get some of those things on my wish list into things that I actually purchase. But with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy swatch videos, I have a whole bunch of them to check out. So I will leave a playlist down below and at the end card here. And if you enjoyed the video, then I would absolutely love it if you gave me a big old thumbs up. It helps out the channel. It helps out small YouTubers like me. And if you want to see more swatch videos from me or just more videos in general, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below to stay in the loop and to join the friend circle that we have going on here. But with that being said, I hope that you are having an absolutely amazing and beautiful day wherever you are. And thank you so much for spending your time here today and taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I greatly appreciate it and I hope to see you next time. Bye!